In this video, I'm going to demonstrate one of the little gadgets I threw together to help me find where the television transmitters are when I'm putting up an antenna. Now, this little device here, it's made by WineGuard. It's called the WineGuard Sensor Pro. And it doesn't come like this when you buy it. This is a little antenna I threw on it. It's really designed for cell phones, but it does work for some of the uh, UHF frequencies around here. And basically, it's my little portable direction finder. Now, this, this unit here is basically all you get when you buy this thing. It's designed to go in a junction box that's in the wall of your motorhome. And so you got to come up with a 12-volt battery source for it. I just come up with a little battery pack for it myself. And uh, it's got a signal meter on it. So as you're, as you're turning this thing toward the transmitter, you might notice that the signal meter goes up. And it's got a couple other neat functions. One of them, it's got a, uh, an audio uh, tone indicator here. So, for example, let's see if we can get this to work here. As we, uh, uh, what am I doing wrong here? There we go. You might notice as you're getting closer to the transmitter, the beeps uh, increase or decrease. And sometimes that's handy when you're up on a roof and you don't know exactly where to point the antenna. Anyway, that's one thing I use to help me find the uh, television transmitters. The other thing I came up with is this little gadget here. This is just a digital to analog converter box. This is the company name here. And I threw it in an ice bucket with a little portable TV and a, uh, an inverter and a battery bank. And this served me fairly well. It's got a built-in signal meter, so if you push the uh, OK button on the remote here, Let's see, or the info button rather. You might notice that it gives you a uh, an indication of the frequency that you're picking up, rather than just the virtual channel number. And it tells you, uh, it gives you a little signal meter here, so you can actually see the signal strength. Now, what I didn't like about this thing is kind of heavy, and when I'm up on the roof with a steep slope, the thing would tend to slide down on me, and uh, that could be a disaster. So I needed to come up with something a little bit more portable. That's why I came up with this. The other nice thing about this digital to analog converter, uh, which can be found at Walmart, by the way, um, it's uh, got a little USB port so you can plug in a thumb drive or uh, one of your videos you took with your camera, and it'll actually allow you to play the video onto a monitor through this little gadget here. And I guess it's also got the ability to record uh, digital videos off the antenna. In fact, here's another one does the same thing. Uh, in fact, you plug in your own uh, thumb drive here, and you can actually record digital channels. This is like a modern day VCR miniaturized. It's amazing what they're able to do with some of this digital technology now. But basically this has a signal meter in it just like the other one does and so you can use it the same way. In fact you can look here it's displaying the frequency that I'm watching right now just by hitting the info button on the remote and uh, let me see if I can make that go away as well. Here's the info button. Okay now um, one thing I was going to say about this that I like, if I push the, uh, let me see, let me push info again. There's, there's one, one mode you can enter on this thing that will allow you to, um, rather than just see the frequency, it will allow you to do what they call a manual search. I think it was a menu button that I have to push to do this. And the manual search will allow you to check a particular frequency even though it's not programmed into the memory bank. And the reason that's so important is sometimes, let's say you're, you're wanting to know which direction to point your antenna. Well, if you're just using a TV to do that, if it's not already in the memory bank, how are you going to know where to point your antenna? Well, this will allow you to go directly to a particular channel and to, uh, there we go, I got up a different menu here, or a particular frequency to see if there's anything present, a signal present. Here we go, we're looking for a manual search. So I'm going to flip down here to manual search. I'm going to try to anyways, there we go, almost there. And uh, there we go. Okay, now now you can see it's displaying the frequency. It's uh, it's giving me the, the channel number system based on the old channel numbers. Um, I probably should talk a little bit more about the old channel number system. If you watched my previous video, I mentioned how on the old uh, TVs, every channel number was dedicated to a particular frequency, and it would never change. So, for example, channel 13 would be... Uh, 210 to 216 megahertz that would be the bandwidth of that particular channel or channel 2 would be you know another another frequency 54 to 60 megahertz 
or if you're on channel 28 UHF, again, it would be a particular frequency. That never changed. Unlike the new channels, where uh, what's on your display of your television has nothing to do with the frequency being used. In my earlier video, I mentioned how, for example, our PBS channel, which is 8.1 here, it's, uh could be broadcast on 57 megahertz or as high as uh, 503 megahertz, which would be the UHF frequency. Uh, here, basically, this shows you the UHF frequencies, which would be 470 megahertz to 806 megahertz. And based on the old number system, it would be 14 through 69. So on the dial here, it would be 14 through 69. Uh, the reason I'm mentioning that is when I'm out picking an antenna for a customer, if I know they're getting a translator on the UHF frequency, I may go with something like this here. Whereas if it's an area where it's going to be VHF and UHF, I may have to go with something like this here. This is a combo antenna. It has both VHF and UHF. So got to pick the right antenna for the job. Been trying a lot of different antennas, by the way, and one of the things I've noticed is it seems as though the bigger the antenna, the better, is a general rule. And uh, of course, sometimes um, what works in one area doesn't always work in another. Now, here's a site that I often use. Um, I know a lot of you are familiar with it. It's called tvfool.com. And basically, you, you put in your address here. Let me go back a step so I can show you how it works. You just basically you enter your address. Here, my shop address, for example. Uh, go ahead and enter that. Then you click down here where it says map this. And uh, basically what it does, oh, one more step. You've got to go down here where it says show lines pointing to each transmitter. You click in that box there. There we go. Now there's a, there's kind of a, a map showing me exactly where I need to point my antenna to pick up some of the translators in town. Uh, you can see they're pretty spread out around here. And that can be kind of a challenge for me. Although not all these can be picked up, by the way. Here's the one that we have. It's up on... Uh, oh, there's something I didn't necessarily want. Uh, anyway, we've got a transmitter, transmitter up here on what they call King Mountain. That tends to be on the VHF frequencies, whereas a lot of the ones I get around here are on the UHF frequencies. And if you, you scroll down here a little bit, you'll note that uh, they color code a lot of these uh, channels you're likely to get based on the color coding. So, for example, if it's in the green area here, they tell you here a rabbit ears an antenna might work. If it's yellow, they think it might work with an attic mounted antenna. And if it's in the red, like CBS, they're suggesting you're going to need a roof mounted antenna. Again, these things aren't always that accurate. Also, they have a number system here based on the old virtual numbers that you might note. Uh, for example, you know, ABC's on uh, channel 12. And again, channel 12 is a particular frequency uh, that's uh, based on the old number system here not the new system so keep that in mind channel 12 here could be anywhere from 207 megahertz to 479 megahertz but in the old days it would have been uh what are we looking at 204 to 210 megahertz anyway sorry if i get overly complicated trying to explain all this here just trying to cover all the bases so for what it's worth i hope you enjoy the video if you're finding them helpful please consider subscribing and please give the video a thumbs up Thanks.